ang posibleng tanong na maaaring lumabas ngayong darating na Philippine Nursing Licensure Examination ng alay ko sa inyo for today. 15. Board exam type of questions with rationalization that will cover your foundation of nursing practice. PNLE 1. If you want to know more about that, stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing education on videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing education on videos once a week. Don't miss that out. Subscribe now. Hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really help know that you like to see more content like this. Without further ado, Nurses, let's jump into the video. Hi everyone! Isang panibagong nursing lecture nga ang alik ko sa inyo for today. Pero bago ang lahat, gusto ko lang ulit magpasalamat sa lahat ng patuloy na sumusuporta sa channel ko, lalong-lalo na sa mga nursing test banking videos ko. Last week videos, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yon, ilalagay ko siya dyan. Napakainit nga po ng pagtagap nyo at alam ko naman na nalalapit na yung board exam and nothing's gonna stop the board exam unless this COVID thingy. But you guys, I want you to get yourself ready starting from now. Kaya naman, another nursing test backing video ang alay ko for you. This week, another foundation of nursing practice, PNLE1 board exam type of questions with rationalization ang alay ko sa inyo for today. Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung mga other uh, uploads ko about sa nursing test banking videos, i-check out mo yung description box or kapag nagpapaut itong icon button right here, click that one out because I'll be providing, I'll be putting the links to all the playlists including some other nursing um, playlists I have on my channel. And also, I would like to congratulate Every one of us for reaching 12,000 subscribers. Yes, 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 yes. Nako pa sensya na kayo sa setup ng background na pero ipinapangako ko sa inyo sa mga susunod na araw. I'm gonna work on it. Now, before anything else, let me remind you guys about the intention of this video. Every time we do a nursing test banking videos, I want you guys to realize and understand that the intention of uh, um, nursing test banking videos that I created for you is for you to have the full grasp of the rationalization because it doesn't matter your score doesn't of course we do want a high score but for now your main intention is really understand the reason why is that the right answer so that sa araw ng board exam alam mo exactly how to answer and how you're gonna approach the questions okay kaya naman hindi ko na patatagalin pa medyo mahaba itong video na to let me switch back to my PC and I'll see you guys in a bit welcome back to my channel you guys and this is another nursing test banking video natin for this week gusto ko nga ulit magpasalamat sa inyo sa patuloy na pagsuporta nyo sa mga nursing test banking videos na kinecreate ko ngayon kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung uh, last week's upload natin where I uploaded um, 15 board exam type of questions with rationalization that covers your foundation of nursing practice panoorin mo yun ililink ko yung um, actual link or yung yeah yung link ng description box link ng playlist sa, de sa description box i-click mo yun kasama ng ibang mga nursing test banking videos natin now let this be your nursing study guide today we're gonna have PNLE1 which is your foundation of nursing practice I decided to create another nursing test banking video for this week kasi naman sobra sobra at nag-uumapaw yung response nyo sa mga nursing test banking videos and syempre para tulong na rin sa mga upcoming test takers natin dyan and sa Philippine Nursing Licensure Examination for 2022. Handa na ba kayo? Handa na. Eto na. So, let me provide you our objectives for our today's discussion. So, every time we do a nursing test banking video, um, we only have two objectives. One, provide and discuss board exam type of questions, which I will do for you. And then, I will also provide you a rationalization per each board exam type of questions. Those are two, those are the two main intentions of this video. All right. So let me provide to you the instructions. The way you're gonna take this video or the way you're gonna approach this video exam is as if, think about it as if you are in the actual room where you are going to take the actual um, board exam. So you will be given 15 board exam type of questions. I will be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have five seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. Choose the letter of the correct answer Good luck, nurses. All right. 
Alright, hinga-hingang malalim. Ito na tayo, sisimulan natin sa number one question, board exam type of question number one. Asking the questions to determine if the person understands the health teaching provide by the nurse or provided by the nurses would be included during which step of nursing process. Sa tanong na ito, nurses, tinatanong ka about sa nursing process. Ngayon, binigyan ka ng scenario. Kapag ikaw daw ay nagtatanong ng questions, you're asking questions to your clients, which part of nursing process yun? Is it A, assessment? Is it B, evaluation? Is it C, implementation? Or D, planning of goals? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. What is your answer? Very good. It is letter B. Evaluation. Nako, me medyo nalito siguro kayo kasi assessment and evaluation, okay? But let me provide to you the rationalization. Evaluation nga po ang tamang sagot because evaluation includes observing the person, asking questions, and comparing the patient's behavioral responses with the expected outcomes. Hence, the answer is evaluation. Nakuha ba ito? Nakatama ba kayo? I am so proud of you. Next question, board exam type of question number two. Which of the following item is considered the single most important factor in assisting the health professional in arriving at a diagnosis or determining the person's needs? Ang tanong dito, alin daw dito ang most important factor para magkaroon ka ng diagnosis or to, for you to come up with a diagnosis or determining the person's needs. Is it A, diagnostic test results? Is it B, biographical date? Is it C, history of present illness? Or D, physical examination? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. What is the answer? Very good. P, um, HPI. History of present illness. Bakit? History of present illness nga po ang tamang sagot because the history of present illness is the single most important factor in assisting the health professional in arriving at a diagnosis or determining the person's needs. Pag sinabog malilito, pag sinabing history of present illness, yung uh, one way of you getting the uh, present illness or history of present illness is asking what is your complaint. Um, uh, from there, you will start um, with the you know getting information as per what is the reason behind that is the um um the pain or pain the the complaint of your patient present illness yung kalagayan ng kanyang kalusugan sa mga oras na ito all right so you kind of like try to get the history let's say your patient is ex um, experiencing uh, chest pain you will get the entire history. When does when does the pain started? Any any factors that aggravated the pain? Any um any heart disease? Something like that. All of those will actually help you come up with um determining the the diagnosis or what it is really that your patient needs. All right. So next question, a tiny board exam type of question number three in preventing the development of an external rotation deformity of the hip in a client who must remain in bed or any period of time the most appropriate nursing action would be uh, would be to use nursing most appropriate nursing action sa board exam pag nakakita ka ng most appropriate action ibig sabihin lahat ng mga choices yan appropriate alin dyan yung most in uh, in um what's this sa sitwasyon na to um, the question is really asking you for um, preventing development of external rotation. Alin dito, positioning, ang magpe-prevent ng external rotation. Mal malimit ito, kadalasan itong ina-advise o ginagawa natin sa mga patient who underwent ORIF. Okay? So, is it letter A, trochanter roll extending from the chest, uh, I mean, from the crest of the ilium to the mid-thigh? Or B, Pillows under the lower legs, C, footboard, or D, hip abductor pillow. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. The answer is letter A. Very good. Trochanter roll extending from the crest of the ilium to the mid-thigh. Bucket. 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 
atrochondral role properly placed provides resistance to the external rotation of the hip. Hen uh, hence, A is the correct answer. Board exam type of question number four, which stage of pressure ulcer? Stages of pressure ulcer ang pinagahanapan. Development does ulcer extends from uh, into the subcutaneous tissue. Simple lang ang tanong, you guys. Alin sa mga pressure stages of pressure injury ang nag extend sa subcutaneous tissue? May fats na na involved. Is it A stage 1? Is it B stage 3? Is it C stage? I mean, is it B stage 2? Sorry, is it C stage 3 or D stage 4? Your 5 seconds starts now. Time's up, nurse. Sana makatulong itong visualization na ito sa inyo. Okay, so the answer, very obvious, is letter C, stage 3. The way you're gonna think about or you're gonna approach pressure injury um, questions is that especially when the question is asking you, um, um, what's this, uh, uh, levels of your uh, pressure injury. Stage 1, you will always talk about the skin. So, meron tayong dyang epidermis. Stage 2, meron tayong dyang dermis. Stage 3, that's fat. Stage 4, that is your muscles involvement, muscle involvement. Hence, the answer is letter C nga po. Stage 3, clinically a deep crater or without under, um, undermining of adjacent tissue is noted. Alright? So, proceed na tayo. Sinong nakatama nga pala sa ano, number 4? But anyways, move on na tayo kung hindi mo natama yun, don't worry because the main intention, bago segue ko lang, every time you're gonna take or you're gonna listen to my um, nursing test banking videos, I want you to understand that the main intention of this video is really not to get a high score. Of course, we want that. But for now, since where you are, you guys are preparing, I want you to, the real intention is really for you to have the full grasp of the rationalization so that when you encounter them in the actual board exam, even if they change the structure of the words or the structure of the question, you know exactly that that is kind of like look the same way as the previous question before. So once you noticed it and once you are aware of the rationalization, you can definitely answer, um, give the answer or ease out the board exam, hopefully. All right. So board exam type of question number five, when the method of wound healing is one in which Wound edges are not surgically approximated. Wound edges are not surgically approximated. And the integumentary co uh, continuity is restored by granulations. The wound healing is termed. Ano daw wound healing ito kapag ang wound edges is not or are not appro uh, surgically approximated. And the integumentary uh, continuity is restored by granulations. My granulations that involve is it a second intention healing, b primary intention healing, c third intention healing, or d first intention healing. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurse says, very good. The answer is letter a second intention healing. Why? When wounds the his or the uh, dehis or yung tinatawag natin yung parang may mga laceration sa gilid hindi siya hindi siya nagko-close yung wound they will allow to heal or they will allowed to heal by secondary intention wound dehis involved that is your second intention healing malino yon malina board exam type of question number 6 an 80 year old male client is admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of pneumonia. Nurse Oliver learns that the client lives alone and hasn't been eating or drinking. When assessing him for dehydration, Nurse Oliver would expect to find. So, assessment ng dehydration, that is the question. Also, yung ibang mga body ng question, tandaan mo, mala admit dahil sa pneumonia. At hindi ko makain, hindi dumiinom. So, kapag nag assess ka ng dehydration sa pasyenteng, um, 8 year old, ano yung dapat mong i-expect na makita? Is it A, hypothermia? Is it B, hypertension? C, distended neck veins? Or D, tachycardia? Your 5 seconds starts now. Wee wee, nahirapan ba kayo doon? Oo, medyo mahirap itong tanong na to in terms of difficulty. But I know you guys can make it. And the answer to this question is letter D. Very good. Tachycardia. 
Now, tachycardia nga po ang tamang sagot. Here's the explanation why. With an extracellular fluid or plasma volume deficit, compensatory mechanisms stimulate the heart, causing an increase in heart rate. Period. Paano mo nga pala masasabi ang uh, na tachycardic ang pasyente mo? What is your normal value? 80 to, I mean, 60 to 100 or... Um, yeah, 60 to 100 beats per minute. More than 100, that is considered your tachycardic patient. Malino yon, ang mali na compensatory mechanism nga po ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Hence, magmamanifest ang yung tachycardia. Board exam type of question number 7. Nako, computation. <laughs> Okay, the physician prescribes me peridine or demerol, 75 mg IM, every 4 hours as needed to control clients' post-operative pain. So, pain management ito, kaya nagbigay ng demerol, 75 mg Q4 PRN. The package insert is me peridine, 100 mg per ml. Ang tanong, how many milliliters or how many milliliters of meperidine should the client receive? So, drug computation ito, is it A, um, 0 0.75, is it B, 0 0.6, is it C, 0 0.5, or D, 0 0.25? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, nurses. What is the answer? Very good. Kung medyo mabilis naman po ang ating discussion o yung timing, kasi alam ko may computation ito, alam naman natin yan. So, ipost mo lang, tapos ahayaan kita, balik ka lang ulit. But the answer to this question, nurses, is letter A. Very good. 0.75. Five. Now, to determine the number of milliliters the client should receive, the nurse uses the fraction method in the following equation. Ito susul itatry ko ha. 75... ML, ako ang pangat ng penmanship, 75 um, ML milligram um, over X ML is equals to 100 milligrams per 1 ML. Saan nakuha tong 10 milligrams or 100 milligrams per ML? Ito o, oh, stock dose mo. Ito, ang available mo is desired dose, which is ordered by the doctor. So, tinatanong, tinatanong ka, ano ang volume mo? So, to solve this, X is, um, um, to solve for X, cross-multiply lang po ang gagawin natin. So, 75 times 1 ml is equals to X ml times 100 milligram. So, 75 is equals to 100 X 75 over 100 is equals to X and then 0.75 ml or 3 fourth ml nga po. Yun ang value ng iyong X. Malino yon, Malinaw. So, proceed na tayo. Nako, malapit na tayo matapos. Ilang questions na lang ba? Parang 7 questions to go? 8 questions? So, make it count, you guys. Hinga, 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 hinga. Board exam type of question number 8. Am I a client with diabetes mellitus is receiving insulin? Which statement correctly describes an insulin unit? In short, tinatanong ka definition of terms ng insulin. Is it A, it's a common measurement in metric system? Or B, it's the basis for solids in the Avoidupas system? Or C, it's the smallest measurement in the apothecary system? Or D, it's a measure of effect, not a standard measure of weight or quantity. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. Nako, tinatanong ka ano daw ang insulin unit mo? Ang tanong ay about the definition ng insulin unit. The answer to this question, nurses, listen, letter D. Very good. It's a measure of effect, not a standard measure of weight or quantity. An insulin unit is measure of effect, not a standard measure of weight or quantity. Different drugs measured in units may have no relationship to one another in quality or quantity. Hence, the answer is letter D. Next, board exam type of question number 9. Nurse Oliver. Ito na naman si Oliver, you guys. <laughs> Measures the client temperature at 100 de uh, 102 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the equivalent centigrade temperature? Conversion lang, that is the question. 
Paano mo, ano ang conversion ng 102 degrees Fahrenheit sa centigrade sa Celsius? Is it A, 40.1 degrees Celsius, B, 38.9 degrees Celsius, or C, 48, uh, 48 degrees Celsius, or D, 38 degrees Celsius? Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. Again, kung medyo nahirapan kay sa tanong na to kasi nag-compute ka pa sa papel mo. Nako, speaking of papel, meron nga nag-tag sa picture. I mean, nag-comment nga doon sa Facebook page ko na nagsinusulat niya yung lahat ng mga sagot niya sa paper. Tapos, um, tag dito, ilalink ko yun dito. Sinusulat niya yung mga sagot niya sa paper. Tapos, uh, sinasagutan niya together with the video. Na-appreciate ko po yun at nakapasa siya. Nakapasa siya doon siya. Nakapa, nakakuha siya ng mataas na marka doon sa video na yun. Maraming maraming salamat sa'yo. Nakalimutan ko yung pangalan mo but I'm gonna insert your name here now and including the, your scores. I am so proud of you. At ito nga pala. Anyways, Ito nga palang mga, um, what's this, mga video, mga slides na to, mga pictures na to. Huwag mong mamaliitin yan ha. Kasi I'm putting that there just for you to also remind yourself or also a means of reviewer. Hindi lang siya pang paganda. Okay, so the answer to this question is letter B, 38.9 degrees Celsius. Now to convert Fahrenheit degree, uh, degree to centigrade, use this formula. Um... Degree Celsius is equals to, open and close parenthesis, Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, minus 32, divided by 1.8. So, degree Celsius, I try natin itong i-convert dito sa ating, o i-apply natin itong ating given values. So, kung i-apply mo yon, yung formula na yon, ganito ang mag niya, degree Celsius uh, is equals to, open and close parenthesis, 102, minus 32, Divided by 18, I mean 1.8. So that means 70 divided by 1.8 is equals to 38.9 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, wag malilito. Kung hindi mo nakuha itong sagot na ito dito, try mo ulit gamitin itong formula na to. Okay? Malino ba yon? Malina. Next, board exam top of question number 10. Last six questions na. Make this one count. The nurse is assessing a 48-year-old client who has come to the physician's office for his annual physical exam. One of the first physical, first physical signs of aging is, tinatanong ka, ano yung mga first uh, signs of aging, physical signs of aging? Is it A, accept, um, accepting limitation while developing assets? B, increasing loss of muscle tone? Is it C, failing eyesight, especially close vision? Or D, having more frequent aches and pains. First physical sign, that is your term. And also, mind you guys, may clue ha sa tanong 48. Alin kaya dito yung magmamanifest sa 48-year-old um, when you talk about aging physically? Alright, your five seconds starts now. Time's up, you guys. The answer to this question is let leather letter c failing eyesight especially close vision failing eyesight especially close vision is one of the first sign of aging in middle life ito nga po ay ages 46 to 64 more frequent aches and pains begin in the early late years um, ages 65 to 79 increase in loss of muscle tone occurs later huli na to you guys 80 and older so, malino ba yun? Nakuha nyo yun? Nakuha. Very good. Board exam type of question number 11. Last five questions. The physician inserts a chest tube into a female client to treat a pneumothorax. Chest tube. That is the situation. The tube is connected to water seal drainage. Water seal, chest tube. The nurse in charge can prevent chest tube air leaks. Paano mo daw prevent ang chest tube air leaks? That is the question. Is it A, are you going to check and tap all connections? B, checking patency of the chest tube. C, keeping uh, the head of the bed slightly elevated. Or D, keeping the chest drainage system below the level of the chest. Prevention of leaks. That is the question. Your five seconds starts now.
Time's up, you guys. Actually, the choices are all about how are you gonna take care of the clients or nursing interventions mo sa client who has chest tube. Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood, para mayroon ata akong discussion about pleural effusion related din to dito. I can like discuss about chest tube drainage. So, panoorin mo yun nasa medical surgical playlist natin yon. But going back to this question, you guys, the answer is letter A, checking and tapping all connections. Why? Air leaks commonly occur occur in the system isn't secure i mean let me say that one more time air leaks commonly occur if the system isn't secure checking all connections and tapping them will prevent air leaks the chest drainage is kept lower to promote drainage not to prevent leaks all right so tapping up para ma prevent natin yung um air leaks at kapag nagkakaroon ng air leaks, at sa lang ang ibig sabihin nun, yung air tube o yung system, it's not secured. So, you might wanna check the patency, also including the viability of your actual device or the actual chest tube and refer to the physician. Next, 12, uh, body exam type of question number 12, Nurse Trish must verify the client's identity before administering medication. Patient identification question ito. She is aware that the safest way to verify identity is to what is the safest way based on the following um, choices. Is it A, check the client's identification band. B, ask the client to state his or her name. Is it uh, C, state the client's name out loud and wait the client to repeat it. Sasapokin kita. D, check the room number and the client's name on the bed. Isa pang sapok. The five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. Alam ko, alam ko, dahil matatalino mga sudyante ko, itong C and D, krenos out mo na yan. Very good. Kasi kung yan ang sagot mo, magdasal ka na. Charing. But, alam ko marami sa inyong nalito between A and B. But the answer to this one, you guys, at huwag kayo magre-react, is letter A. Now, the client's identification band nga po is the safest way to verify the patient's identity. Checking the client's identification band is the safest way to verify the client's identity because the band is assigned on admission and it isn't be removed at any time. If it is removed, it must be replaced, you guys. Asking the client's name or having the client repeated his name would be appropriate only for clients who, who whose GCS 15 alert oriented to time, place, and events, uh, time, place, and person, I mean, and able to understand what is being said, but it isn't the safe standard of practice. Names on bed aren't always reliable. Okay? So, pwede naman yung client status name. Sa mga GCS, ano yan? 15. E, paano kapag bedridden din yung pasyente mo? Paano kapag GCS 10? Paano kapag GCS 9? O, di, wala ka na. So, the answer to this is letter A. Nakuha yun, nakuha. Board exam type of question number 13. Physician orders dextrose 5% in water. 1,000 ml to be infused over 8 hours. To run for 8 hours. The IV tubing delivers 15 drops. This is your drop set. Drops per ml. Nurse John should run the IV infusion at a rate. Tinatanong ka, anong IV infusion mo kung naka-macroset ka? Um, ang goal mo is to run the 1,000 ml for 8 hours. Anong drop rate mo? Is it A, 30 drops per minute? Is it B, um, 32 drops per minute? Or C, 20 drops per minute? Or is it letter D, 18 drops per minute? Your 5 seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. Nako, sana nakaitulong ito ang IV flow rate formula na nandito sa iyong screen. Nilagay ko talaga dyan for you to be uh, reminded para reviewer mo na rin. Okay, so the answer to this question, you guys, is very good. Letter B, 32 drops per minute. I will explain to you why. Now, giving 1,000 ml over 8 hours is the same as giving 125 ml over 1 hour. So, sa isang oras, meron tayong ano, 60 minutes. Find the numbers of milliliters per or milliliters per minutes as follows. So, makinig ha. 125 over 60 minutes is equals to x over 1 minute. So, 60x is equals to 125 is equals to 2.1 ml per minute. To find the number of drops per minute, ganito nga po ang gagawin nyo. 2.1 ml 
over x gtt or yung drops is equals to 1 ml over 15 gtt or yung drops um x is x is now then equal to 32 drops per minute or 32 drops per minute gtt okay yung gtt and drops they kind of like use it we kind of like use it interchangeably so wag malilito alam niyo naman yon pero gusto ko lang sabihin all right last two questions for exam type of questions number 14. If a central venous catheter becomes disconnected, meron kang VC, uh, CVV. Meron kang central line in a disconnect accidentally. What should the nurse in charge do immediately? Immediate action mo sa mga naka central line na pasyente mo kapag na dislodge. That is the question. Is it A, clamp the catheter? B, call another nurse? Ang saya mo. C, call the physician? Sayamorin or D apply a dry sterile dressing to the site. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. The answer to this question is letter A. Clamp the catheter. Very good. Clamp the catheter nga po ang tamang sagot. Now here's the reason why you guys you need to listen, especially those nurses who are patients who have central line, central venous line, ito po sila. If the central venous catheter becomes disconnected, the nurse should immediately apply a catheter clamp if available. If the clamp isn't available, the nurse can place a sterile syringe or catheter plug in the catheter hub. After cleaning the hub with alcohol or povidone iodine solution, the nurse must replace the IV extension and restart the infusion. Malinaw yon, Malinaw. Nako, last questions. Bago ko i-reveal yung talaga namang last questions natin for this video, gusto ko lang ulit magpasalamat sa inyo sa mainit na pagtanggap nyo sa channel ko. At congratulations sa ating lahat kasi 12,000 subscribers na nga tayo. On the way to 50k, you guys, on the way. So, if there's anything that I'll be asking from you guys, I just like to, I would just like to ask you to keep on sharing my videos. Keep on sharing the links to my social media accounts. Tulungan nyo na nga ako na ipalaganap natin ito. Kasi alam ko na napakalaking tulong nga ito sa inyong lahat. At um, masaya ako na nakakatulong ako in my own little way. Alright, so last question for this video you guys. Board exam top for questions number 15. A female client was recently admitted. She was uh, she has fever, weight loss, and watery diarrhea is being admitted to the facility. While assessing the client, Nurse Hazel inspects the client's abdomen and notices that it is slightly concave. Additional assessment should process in which or oh, additional assessment should proceed in which order. So simply lang yung tanong, pinaikot ikot ka parang ang dami daming history ng tanong. Pero tinatanong ka lang dito, paano ka mag assess ng um, abdomen. Nursing assessment mo when it comes to your assessment. How are you? Diba may process tayo doon? May inspection, may auscultation, may palpation, and then merong percussion. Paano yung sequence when it comes to your abdomen? Is it A, palpation, auscultation, and percussion? B, percussion, palpation, and auscultation? C, palpation, percussion, and auscultation? Or D, auscultation, percussion, and palpation? Last question, you guys. Make this one count. Your five seconds starts now. Time's up, nurses. What is the answer? Letter D. Auscultation, percussion, and palpation. Now, the correct order of assessment for examining the abdomen is inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation. Less nga po natin ginagawa ang palpation when we're going to assess for our abdomen. Now, the reason for this approach is that the less intrusive techniques should be performed before the more intrusive techniques, percussion and palpation, can alter natural findings during auscultation. Ano yung pre-prevent mo dito? Yung activation ng GI mo. Peristalsis movement mo. Pa pwede kasi mag-create or mag-stimulate ng peristalsis movement mo, GI or bowel movement mo, ang percussion and palpation. Especially, ang iyong percussion kasi you can like tap the abdomen. So, yun na nga. Maraming maraming salamat po sa panonood. Thank you so much you guys for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan nyo nga po yung next video natin next week. 
regarding sa nursing management, nursing, um, nursing, anything under the sun about, we can definitely talk about a lot of things when it comes to your nursing. And pakilagay po yung score nyo sa baba, I would like to assess or to evaluate, not really assess, but evaluate the scores of my students. Once again, gusto ko lang kayong ulit pasalamatan sa patuloy na pagsuporta nyo sa channel ko. Thank you, thank you so much, you guys. And tulungan nyo na nga ako, ipamalitan nyo na sa radyong sila, ang pinakabago, pinakafresh, at ang pinakalibring nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Hope you learned something. Help me grow my channel. You are already here. You might as well subscribe. Hashtag Team Kulta. Give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends. Let me know what you guys think. You put them down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to check out the other playlists I created for you. I'll be putting the links on the description box. Just simply click this icon button right here. The links to all my social media accounts is down on the description box. Check that out. Follow me. Tulungan nyo na nga po ako. Goal to 50k na nga tayo. <laughs> I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching.